Not often I get super dressed up for videos, but for today's video, we are in our, our Sanderson sister cardigan realness. Hello everyone. If you've stumbled upon this page, my name is Brendan. I am your host today. I am also the co-owner of The Rustic Tub, our small bath and body care business in the heart of Ontario, self-branding at its finest for that one. And for our second week in October, if you're watching in October, if not, fast forward to October to watch this one again. It is our second week in October. And as I said last week's video, I am a super fan of this season. So it's spooky season, it's fall, it's colorful. It's cozy. Everything is so on point about it. Now going into the fun part of it, today's video uh, might not be fun and cozy and comfortable. We are coming out of our element here to do a brand new soap uh, completely from scratch. And when I say from scratch, I mean from scratch. Being that we are now officially super deep into October, and that's just like the second week of October, that's still deep into it. We are deep into our fall season, and that also means with fall comes a very certain festival that's widely known and widely loved across Canada. Could be the States, well, could be worldwide. I'm not too sure on that one. I know Canada for sure, and I stick with what I know, which is that one. It could be everywhere, so if you want to correct me on that one, go for it. Before this week's video, we're playing in tune to an event coming up. And that event is the Cranberry Festivals. And Cranberry Festivals happen in fall quite often, late September, mid-October, towards the end. I haven't seen any at the beginning of November. That's not to say they don't happen. But literally what we are doing for today's video is we are making a pure cranberry soap from scratch. Going into our ingredients list for today, though, we are using a quart of cranberry. So we're going to be doing that whole process down there. And then we have our standard oil. So we have our avocado oil, our castor oil. We are using avocado butter today, steric acid, our distilled water, of course. And we have our coconut oil and we are using olive oil today. I did find a little one on sale since it's a tester bar. That should be more than enough for this. And if I have forgotten anything else off the top of my head, I'll dive into it as I always do with my videos. But without further ado, we are actually going to go into our house and we are going to start the process of our cranberry. So we have to do a whole process in order to get our soap water first. So we're going to be doing a step before the sodium hydroxide step. So, oh, that's one of the other ingredients that you throw in is it's a cold processed soap. We need that. Without further ado, we're going in the house. We're going to be boiling down our cranberries. So let's see how we get that one going. So our very first step in making this soap is going to be extracting our cranberry juice, or in this case, our cranberry water for the recipe. So I have jumped into this one um, full head first, trying to figure out what to do. And apparently to get our cranberry water, we're going to be boiling this, and then we know it will be ready when all of our cranberries have split open. So before we do anything, we have to get our cranberry juice, which this will be when everything boils. We'll let it set down. So we will come back and check up on that when these are ready, split, and good to go. All right, so we are getting onto a halfway mark here with our cranberries, and I will honestly say I did not expect them to go the way that they have gone. So cranberries, when you get them, are very hard on the outer shell. And when they said that to boil the water to get the cranberry out, they will pop and sizzle. I literally did not expect them to pop and sizzle. So they've been going off like little popcorn kernels. We're gonna let this keep going until all of them have gone through, but they are softening up and we are starting to get the juice out of them. So we're gonna be going ahead and coming on back when they are all ready to go. Okay, so literally after about 15 minutes, we've boiled down the cranberries. Each one has popped, it's sizzled, it's cracked. 
I don't know if you can see it on the camera because she is, well, steaming up quite a bit, but we do have a very, very red water base that we want to use. This is what we want. This is our cranberry water. And I don't think I mentioned it before, but I got a quart of cranberries and I just measured it out with the quart of water. Uh, for those of you who didn't know what that was, that's four cups of water, four cups of cranberries. I learned that very, very quickly today. But we're going to go ahead, we're going to let this cool down a little bit. We're going to strain the cranberries and then we will have our soap water uh, to make our cranberry soap. So we'll be able to see the red color hopefully later on. Right now it is a beautiful cranberry red on camera. You get a lot of steam. So we're going to go ahead and get this all set up and move on back to our studio for the next portions. Okay, so that portion went a lot smoother than I definitely thought. I thought there was going to be mad hardships with boiling all of that down. But as you can see, we have our cranberry water right here with us. Like that red is vibrant. I, I won't lie. I did not expect it to be the color that it is right now. Like this is beautiful and I can only hope that the soap is going to remain this color for the whole time. We're gonna, we're gonna have our fingers crossed for that one. And as well going into it, you can also use the pulp of the cranberry as well. You can just find blended and everything. I wanted to take a safe-ish step going into it first. I wanted to see how the reaction would be with the cranberry water first. There could always be a second one after. This is a first of the first for us, so we're playing it uh, very safely right now and just fingers crossing, hoping that it will stay this color. So when it comes to pouring the water, you don't have to be masked up for this portion. It's just when you do your lye one. However, wear your gloves as always, even if you're making it for yourself or your friends, safety is good just to have. So we're gonna go ahead and pour in our water. And I can knock it over how beautiful this color is. I really, really hope it stays this color. All right, so to start, I am just gonna add a little bit just to see what the reaction is. And if I can get the color to stay, then I will add in the rest at a slow pace. Well, that is a reaction. So I'll try to tilt it up. You can kind of see that the red is starting to turn green and it's getting into a really dark color. So I think we're gonna end up with a very eggplant color. I'm just gonna go ahead, add it in. If it goes green, this is gonna be very interesting. You and I are seeing this for the first time. If you have made cranberry soap too, and you're watching this video, you're probably laughing right now, being like, he has no idea what's about to happen. So that part's correct, because now it is a bright orange color, and it is like a fun, fire color like fire orange not fire red like that one right there but we're gonna go ahead she is mixed in we're gonna let everything kind of set up we need this to cool down before we move on to the next part so we're gonna let it off to the side and we will be back shortly to melt down everything else okay so now that it's dry you can see that it is a very bright yellowy orange i'm expecting this to be normal with everything that we've done it's happened the same with our rhubarb soap as well so we're just going to keep pushing forward i have come to terms she will not be this cherry red but we will be probably adding some mica powder if the colorations is going a little bit south but for now we're just going to continue on with the rest of it Okay, diving right on into our butters and our hard oils. We are going straight for our avocado butter. So we're just going ahead, throwing in that mixture there, gonna get it in. And that is our avocado butter done. Moving on to coconut oil. Okay, coming in hot with our coconut oil. You can probably see that I use literally a metal bowl in everything now because it's so much fun okay there we go what we're going to be doing now obviously same thing as all of our other soap videos we're going to be throwing into our double broiler so our nice little heated pot over here i'm going to throw in a couple scoops of our steric acid just so it will harden up and then we will keep on moving from there so in reality while we are testing around with our soap today i have been reading a lot online about the use of citric acid in your soaps 
and it's best to use a 1% pour to it, and it just helps with the soap scum, kind of keeps the bar harder, and it will help with the lathering. So since we're going head first into this full experience, why not just add some to this mixture to see what we come up with? We'll just go ahead and add our 1%. I'm adding it to our water and lye solution. That is what it asks you to do. So we're gonna see, fingers crossed, it's doing a nice little bubble action. And we're gonna hope for the best that it does turn out. So once it comes to the cutting portion of it, that's when we'll know. Okay, while we have everything melting down, I decided this time around just to kind of add our liquid oils to the melted butters, just so I don't have to do a pour, rinse, scrape, repeat, and essentially do those steps over and over. So we're just gonna give it a shot. It's a small tester batch of soap, like I said, so therefore it should totally be fine until we add our lye to the solution. So because with the cranberry water, it did boil up a little bit with the lye solution, that's going to happen. We did lose some of the natural smell to it, and it really was a super subtle smell to go with it. So for this soap, we are going to kick it up with a little bit of fragrance. So we do have a white cranberry. This is from Voyager. This is one of our like main bath bombs that we do at the holidays. So I don't want it to be overpowering. I want it to be as supernatural as possible. I'm not gonna do the required amount that we always put in. I am gonna go with slightly less just because I really want this soap to be as natural as it possibly can. And little amount of fragrance is okay to help kind of assist what you need to assist. So I'm only doing half my normal amount of when it comes to our little tester batches. And honestly, cranberry white is just like such a true sharpness of cranberry. There's a little bit of tart and sweetness into it. This one has been my go-to scent whenever I do anything cranberry, and it's mostly just been the bath bombs for it. Uh, but today is really gonna be the kicker for that one when it all comes together. Okay, jumping right on into adding our castor oil into the big mix. We're just gonna add it all in and then do our mix up to the pot for it. And then we'll be switching up the angle just so we can see the pour of it. Now, I will say before I add our avocado oil, I do have mica powder off to the side, just in case we do have to add a little coloration to the soap, because I don't want it to be orange, it's cranberry, I want it to be cranberry red, that's, that's just my take. Okay, adding in our avocado oil, small amount, just because it's a small soap, and then finally our on sale olive oil. I didn't say it was a big olive oil. I just said that it was on sale. So I couldn't say no when it came to making a soap like this. So I'll just go ahead, add in the desired amount for it. And when I say desired amount, I mean the measured amount that we have set out for it. Well, all right, fastest $4 I ever spent on olive oil. And then because we are moving on to the portion of the video where we're adding in the lye water, we are putting on our goggles again for our safety. From here on out, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna switch up the camera angle so you can see from the view down. So I'll just explain to the matters. I'll add in our lye water into our oils, mix it up. If the color's good, I will leave it. If I'm finding that the color's not what I want it to be, I will add a little bit of our mica powder. And then I will be throwing in our little amount of fragrance and doing our pour. So we're gonna go ahead and do the mix now for it. Okay, in the meantime, as this all carries on, I'm going to do my best to explain what I'm doing, when I'm doing. So if I go silence momentarily, don't take that to heart, I just overthink. Okay, moment of truth if we're gonna get beautiful color. <laughs> And as you can see, that beautiful color is not the color we want to go for. So I am going to go ahead, do our addition of our mica powder. So I am using lipstick red from Fizzberry because I want that cranberry color in there. So we're just going to add little by little until we get the desired effect. <laughs> Mm. 
To me, that's still too pale. I want this baby to have the personality that the cranberry water was. So I'm going in with more. <laughs> Okay, this was the red color that I wanted it to be. On camera, I know it still does look like a little sunsetty brown kind of color. In person, it does match the cardigan. So I am going to go with that and go for the pour. I will be adding in our fragrance right now. So I always add my fragrance at the very end just because some fragrances kick. Some of them accelerate really, really fast. And I never want that to happen with my soap. It does for a couple of them, but I have worked it out so we get it going to be that way. And with the white cranberry fragrance oil, you can see that it actually kind of turned it into a burnt umber of a red color. I'm still gonna pour it. I'll see what we get with our little desired effect. Okay, so I did hit it with the mixer just a little bit while longer. I found that she was just a little too soupy for the pour that I wanted. It's only one color. So in reality, I don't have to worry about time frame. So if she sets up fast, I am at peace with that because she's just going to be one color. So I'm just going to go scrape the sides as we just did. And I'm going to spoon the rest of what I can in. And then we'll just do a very simple little light dusting on the top. Don't know why I grabbed a big spoon to do a little tester mold. But whatever. You live and learn. I try to do different little random patterns every now and then. Do they work? Sometimes. Do some of them not work? Sometimes. It's all in the art of that. So... With this, we're going to let it set up. We're going to let the top cure for a little bit, and then we will wrap her. And I will see you very, very shortly so we can unmold and uncut this baby. Welcome to our 24 hour later mark. So this baby, the only thing I did with it was unravel the, the towels and the blankets that were wrapped around it to incubate it. This baby does so far look good. We're gonna loosen up the sides for it. And hopefully, well, if it's spilled that way and nothing's come out yet, hopefully we have a nice little soap to cut. Patience is key for this one. Because the last time I wanted soap out of a mold super, super fast, it was a eucalyptus one. Eucalyptus um, does take a lot longer to cure than any other soap. So half of it was sludge. It was like a, a bad little iceberg accident. Okay, perfect. She is a little glossy on the sides. And I think that's honestly just because of when I wanted the water to be really, really red. I did pour in a little bit more. So there is a little bit of a higher water content in it. So most likely it is that, or once again, it could be soap sweat just from that occurring. So we're going to go ahead. She does feel firm enough to cut. So we're going to switch up that and we're going to have a nice little short cutting video because it's a nice little short bar. Okay, before we dive on into the pure cut, you can probably see the glisten on that there. So we are going to deal with that. The top to it, she kind of glistens there. I'm hoping this is just soap sweat. And that when we cut into it, there's not going to be a giant pocket of fragrance sweat that just comes pouring out. But here we go. So this mold will get us about seven or six bars. So we generally leave the ends on with them uh, just so we can get the maximum amount of bars from a little mold. But she is fairly glisteny. I'm hoping that is something that does go away. Like I said, this is a learning process for us today as well. So we've always said with this channel, we want to succeed. We want to fail with you. We want to learn from it. We will see how it does so in the next hour or so. If she just wants to fall apart and sweat. We are here for it all. I guess the reality of it was, was I really wanted to have like a proper red cranberry 
bread bar is soap, but we did end up adding the mica powder to it. So in reality, there's nothing to stop us from down the road having some fun swirls to go with it. Always can have fun with that. This one is a little bit thinner than our other bars of soap, like you can probably see the difference. So little tester bar right there to go. That is perfect. And with that out of the way and them on display, we will let them set up for about a day for it to do the curing so we can do the stamp. I will also say after looking at the cuts and everything, I can already tell you that it would be the fragrance oil that would cause it. Sometimes little pockets just get trapped for the glisten and it is totally normal. It has happened with us a couple times. You just gotta let the soap cure a little bit longer. It's nothing to fret over, nothing to panic. Sometimes these things happen. So I'm about 90% happy with how the bar of soap turned out. I do love the color on it and we will just continue on from there. But I believe that is it for this week's video. So if you like what you see, like, subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. I try to upload every Sunday. I do shorts on Friday, but that's a whole different ballpark. And if you like to get access to how we make stuff, our behind the scenes, little tidbits here and there to our Patreons who are already following, like I cannot thank you enough for your support. If you'd like to go over there as well, we do have our Patreon where everything's there. If these babies become 100% happy with me, I will upload the recipe there as well. Maybe tweak it a bit, just depending on it. I might do a couple more rounds just to see if I like it and just to see if I can play around with like maybe the cranberry pulp. I don't know, haven't decided yet. But without further ado, that is it for this week's video. Thank you so, so much for watching. Okay, really, really quickly, it's been a couple days now for the soap to set up. We did let it cure. We do have a lot of little air bubbles in it, but aside from that, the soap did set up really, really nicely. So we will be selling this at our Cranberry Festival. In person, you actually don't see the air bubbles as much as you do on camera, but camera never tells lies. But just to make it a lot more clear, a lot more simpler, this soap did set up, the fragrance oil did finally cure, and this soap is good to go. So thank goodness for that. Okay, that's the final one. Thank you all so much. We will see you next time.